not connect yet, so let's wait a minute. Hello, this is Marisa at All Our Way. Welcome. Um, today we are going to have an exciting recipe. We are going to make chicken tortellini soup with spinach. And uh, it's just the perfect day. I don't know where you are, but right now it is 18 degrees here, chill factor. So it's pretty chilly out. So I'm hoping it's, it's nice and warm where you are. And right now I'm gonna go ahead and connect here, if you don't mind, for just a minute. And then we will get started. Okay, so how has your week been? We've been awfully busy. Yesterday we went to Indianapolis and we took our boys out to lunch. We had an appointment and we got these beautiful flowers. We went to our favorite store, which is Trader Joe's. I love going there. And their flowers are so cheap, I can't believe it. So anyway, uh, at All Our Way, we like to show you easy recipes that you can make uh, in less than 30 minutes. And this is one of my very favorites. It's, it has a, the Italian touch, but also it has a little bit of a Southwestern flair. So if you like spicy, you can really judge how much spice you can add to it. So to begin with, what we'll do is we have one, and I'll start the heating here. We, uh, okay, there. I'm still getting used to this type of burner, so forgive me if I'm a little slow on getting it going. All right, so uh, we will start with uh, about three cloves of garlic, minced, and one onion that is diced. And I'm gonna add a little bit more olive oil to this. And I know it sounds like, it looks like a lot of onion, but believe me, it's not, it's really not that bad. It, it tastes delicious. So I'm gonna, oh, add just a few more squirts here and give it a stir. Now, originally this recipe was, uh, it didn't have chicken in it, but if you have a husband like my honey, he has to have meat. Uh, there has to be meat somewhere around there, except for maybe, oh, uh, maybe a lasagna. Now lasagna, his lasagna would have meat in it. So uh, it, it, it's entirely a must. So we uh, were having chicken, these are chicken tenders and it's about a pound of chicken tenders that we've cut up. Normally what we do, we buy chicken breasts on sale, the boneless, skinless chicken breast, and sometimes they're way, way, way too thick. So what we do is uh, we take the tender off of it and freeze it and we'll uh, few them together. That way we can either make uh, oh, stir fry, we can uh, fry them, we can do quite a few things with them. So, um, add, I'll add a little bit of salt and pepper to this as it's cooking. So, are you a shopper uh, at a store or do you like to do the internet? You can go ahead and give me a thumbs up or whatever, but we, uh, we, like, to, uh, we like to do the internet. It's a lot easier for us on the internet. So, in case you're just joining, uh, we are making chicken spinach tortellini soup, and this is a real quick recipe. Um, oh, at Trader Joe's, you know where I got the flowers? Well, we got the fresh tortellini, and that is about 10 ounces. And when it's fresh like that, it doesn't take any time at all to go ahead and cook. So I have I have a question for you. Now this is this is a little kind of a survey, if you will. The other day, I belonged to this Italian group, and uh, the question was, have you ever made a casserole, or have you ever eaten a casserole? Well, the answers were, never. I wouldn't feed that to my family, and I got to thinking, you think the person asked, do you feed slop to your you know, family, or have you eaten it? So I got to thinking, and uh, apparently there were other people who thought like I do. Well. Uh, if you really get down to the nitty-gritty of it, 
Lasagna is a casserole. Manicotti is a casserole. Eggplant Parmesan is a casserole. So, um, in reality, they were thinking of, I think, what our mothers or grandmothers may have done, oh, a long, long, long time ago, you know, just getting a can of soup, of me a can of soup, uh, some noodles, and a little bit of protein, throw that in, and there you have it. But, you know, I really can't fault moms in those days because um, we don't have the convenience, there's a lot fresher food now that we can get. And in those days, you had to uh, make it everything from scratch. We, we really have a lot of convenience. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and add the chicken. And give that a stir. I like to put chicken in early so it'll caramelize. When it's caramelized, it really tastes a lot better. So here we go. We're gonna let it brown. So do you have a favorite casserole recipe? Or do you, are you like those Italians who say never, I would never feed it to my family, I just don't like it? Um, I think there, there's really a lot to be said for the convenience of it. It's, it's nice having everything in one pan and then serving it from that pan because actually that's what a casserole is. It's a, a dish where you cook the food and you serve it from that dish. So, um, it, uh, I, I think it's great, but I, I have to tell you the story. This, this happened a long, long time ago, and I don't think honey's around here listening. But when we were first married, my sweet mother-in-law, well, she raised seven kids, so you can imagine she spent an awful lot of time in that kitchen. So this is just about the time Hamburger Helper came out. Well, she thought that was the niftiest thing because all the kids were grown, so, you know, thawing out some hamburger and putting in this box and having it all mixed up, it tasted delicious to her. So, she must have had about 20 boxes of that, all different varieties. So, she hurried up and gave me one. She said, you've got to try this. It is so good. So, all right. So, I took it home and I was going to surprise Honey that evening. Huh, the surprise was mine. He came and took a, took a look at it. The air turned a little blue with language. Let's just say I never bought Hamburger Helper again. So that that was a no-no in the house. But, you know, I've made casseroles throughout the years. And, oh, I like, I like to make... I remember once or twice I made a tuna casserole. When the kids were little, they didn't... They really didn't like it all that well. And... It was okay, I guess, but uh, that's not, that's not a, a taste that li the little ones go for. So I'm going to add a little bit more pepper to this. I don't want to add too much because part of the secret ingredient is a hot salsa. And now the salsa brand that we get comes in three varieties. You can get the mild, you can get the medium, you can get the hot. Well, I went ahead and got the hot. Now there's a a cup of hot that I'm going to put in here after the chicken caramelizes a little bit. And, um, but if, if your family doesn't like it, or if you have little ones, you don't want to burn their tongues or their little mouths. So the mild would do just as well. And we also have, if you're just tuning in, uh, I'm Marisa, and from All Our Way, and we are making chicken spinach tortellini soup. And this you will be able to make in less than 30 minutes. I had everything prepared and cut, and uh, I, I wanted to do that just to save time. It's, you know, it's not always fun watching somebody uh, go ahead and cut. And I wanted to tell you a tip. When, I don't know if you ever buy um, baby spinach or arugula or even... Uh, I put paper towels in there because it really helps preserve uh, the the leaves themselves. I read this tip, I really don't remember where. I think it might have been American Test Kitchen. Someplace finding out what is the best way to preserve your greens. Now, when we have we have salad every single night. And that gets a little boring to, you know, cut and clean lettuce every single night. So when we go to the store, 
I we go to the big box store and we'll buy that bag that has uh, the romaine in it. There's might be six or seven in there. So I usually clean them three at a time, and I use my the, the lettuce spinner. And once I clean that up, I'll get a big two-gallon bag, put some paper towels on the bottom, put all the, the lettuce in there, and then put, again, paper towel on top. Now, the, the lettuce never turns brown, but there's another little trick to that, too. I use a ceramic knife. They say either to tear your lettuce or not to use a metal knife. So I've got a ceramic knife I've used for years and years, and it's it stays it stays really well. I mean, it, it it hasn't dulled, but I just use it for the greens. So that's that's a little tip. But if you want to go ahead and make lettuce ahead of time, that is one good way not to have your lettuce or your arugula spoil. I think arugula is more sensitive even than spinach. And I've had arugula for almost a week where it looked just as fresh as it did when I bought it. So remember the paper towels. So anyway, um, this is going. Uh, now I am going to start adding the liquid. Now on this, you can use two quarts of chicken or if you want to make it vegan, forget the chicken in it uh, and just use vegetable broth. I'm going to go ahead and this is a turkey broth that we made from the bones. So I'm going to go ahead and just use this since we had it in the freezer and I don't like to keep things in the freezer for too long. So um, it's, it's two quarts. So I'm going to bring this up to a simmer. Okay. Now this right here is two teaspoons of oregano. I'm adding that to that. Now I'm going to bring it up, as I said, to a simmer. Now this is a 14 ounce can of diced tomatoes with green chilies. So that's going to add a little bit of the green and a little bit of the heat. But it doesn't have the heat that <laughs> our, uh, our salsa over there does. So I'm going to let it come up to a simmer. So the chicken is mostly done since I went ahead and caramelized it. And I hope you don't mind. Uh, get in a little sip of water. When I talk, my mouth gets very dry. Now normally what I do, if it's dinner time, I have a nice glass of white wine as I'm cooking, which is very nice to have. And But since it's early in the afternoon, I don't want to be asleep at 4 o'clock. So here we go. It's going to come up to a simmer pretty soon. It doesn't take long in here. That's one of the nice things about these uh, induction cookers. It hardly takes any time at all to get everything up and running. So today, uh, once we get this done, next week I thought I'd have a surprise for you. It's going to be more of a Christmas type uh, surprise. I don't we like making things that we can take to other people's houses. So last year we made the most fantastic Irish cream ever, and it was so easy to do. In fact, we made two batches, and so I thought I'd, I'd make some this year, and we're thinking about making some amaretto too. We, we really like our amaretto. Um, and the other day, we, uh, if, you're, if you're interested in finding some a good food type gift to give neighbors or older people that really can't take sugar, we made our party mix. And that party mix is the, the kind with the cereal, uh, and we use the wheat checks and the rice checks. We don't use the corn checks. We use the Cheerios and several crackers, but we also, that is also spicy. But again, we have that recipe on all our way on the blog. So if, if you're interested, uh, it makes a lot. We have two humongous roasting pans like that full. And what we do is we put it on one burner and then on one oven, then the other oven. And Honey goes ahead, we have a five gallon bucket and you dump it in and he shakes it up every 15 minutes. So it, it, it's a process, but that's what we give the kids for, for Christmas. Not, not their actual gift itself, but they love that party mix. In fact, one year, our oldest grandson, we asked him what he, what he wanted for his birthday. 
So, and we only make this at Christmas. So he said party mix. So we made, and this is June. So in June, we made a super duper big batch of party mix and gave him a lot, but we gave it to the rest of the family too, because I, I think he would have gotten sick if he would have tried to eat all of that. So anyway, um, do you have your shopping done? I don't. I don't even have my Christmas cards out. Do you, do you even do Christmas cards? I, I really miss some of the old traditions like we used to do. Um, you know, sitting down and getting a nice card from family and um, even, even a picture. Those pictures were kind of nice too, the little Christmassy pictures. Uh, you saw kind of the update on the kids, but now, now with with uh, with the iPhone and the Instagram, you just snap a picture, send it, and there you go. It's it's all done, so you don't really have to worry about uh, just having a special picture Christmas card done for for the children. So this is taking a while to get up there, but you know, well, what do they say? A watch pot never boils, well, or simmers, or does whatever. But once this gets up there. Um, we can go ahead and uh, put in the tortellini, and the tortellini just cooks for uh, this particular brand five to seven minutes, and then right there at the very, very end, we put the spinach because the spinach, when it hits the the hot liquid, it just wilts really quickly. So as I said, I'm not. I only added the salt and pepper to begin with. I didn't want to add it um, in too much as we go along because whether it's broth, whether it's anything else, you just don't know and you don't want it to be too salty because if it's too salty then you've ruined it. And who wants to have a big pot of soup that's ruined? Last week, uh, I just redid a post uh, the other day um, on uh, uh, Louisiana shrimp gumbo. I wasn't really happy with some of the pictures that I had so we went ahead and we always like to have a batch of soup and so we made the soup and it was so good. Oh my gosh, it it just it really hits the spot. It, but it just doesn't have shrimp. It also has we use kielbasa instead of the andouille sausage because the andouille seems to be a little bit on the greasier side. So we just stick to the smoked kielbasa and that, and that is really really good. Okay, we should be coming up pretty soon to a simmer. Once it simmers, we'll go ahead and add the rest. So if anybody has just come in, this is chicken spinach tortellini soup with a southwestern flair. Have to put the southwestern flair in there because we do like our Tex-Mex and the spicy cooking. Although in Italy, they do have, they use a lot of the red pepper flakes, especially in the southern part of Italy. And we, we go through a lot of uh, the pepper flakes too, so. And last, uh, I, I just wanted to say that uh, my daughter-in-law, Lauren, went ahead and made the recipe from last week, and they really liked it. So I went ahead and put it up on All Our Way the, on Facebook. So I'm glad, I'm glad she went ahead and tried it. It is a really good recipe and also very, very fast. Is there, uh, if you have any questions at all, please feel free to, uh, to ask. I will make sure that I answer every one of them or comment or I can't the camera's that far away and my I my distance is pretty bad so even with glasses I have to kind of squint so I'll, I'll be sure and uh, and answer your questions if you have any so this is the first time I've used this induction for anything that has this much liquid so I don't know how long it's going to take hopefully it's not going to take too long because it's 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 up there always turn it up. Well, that's about as high as it's going to go. So we'll just let it see how, how fast it goes. Are you spending Christmas at home or are you traveling? We, our plans are still a little bit up in the air. Um, we're not too sure exactly what, what we're going to be doing. Normally what we do, we go to uh, Indianapolis and spend Christmas Eve with our kids exchange gifts and in the morning we'd have breakfast at our daughter's house and then we'd come home and then it'd be a matter of packing up and these snowbirds are out of dodge we we don't like the cold weather that much so 
Honey gets bored. Of course, I always find things to do. But he can't sit at a computer either. He just, he either has to be putzing, doing something, or going outside. And his going outside uh, is not a matter of, I want to, uh, <laughs> I want to uh, do the snow, you know. And we have a big drive, so clearing the snow is, is no fun for him. So it's going to be just a little bit. I, I would normally put the lid on, but then I can't see what I'm doing. So you, we may have some visitors coming in kind of in between time. Uh, we're donating a sofa. I call it our ugly sofa. We've had it for years and years and years. Uh, and, uh, you know, sometimes when you buy really good things, you may regret it because if you get tired of it, it's still good. So this couch we bought, I think it must have been 1970. Seven. It looks just like new. But it's that real old Mediterranean style, you know, it's kind of busy print, all that oak wood. Nobody wanted it. We couldn't even sell it. So Goodwill's getting it. Hopefully hopefully a nice family can use it because I as I said it's it's still in, in decent shape, but unfortunately it just doesn't go with our our house and nobody sits in it and it's one of the most uncomfortable couches we everybody's always complained about it yeah yeah that was honey asking me a question so um do you uh, now I don't know how many Italians are out there. Do you do the Feast of the Seven Fishes? Do you do anything fishy on on uh, Christmas Eve? Uh, we uh, we do, we have bacala. When, my, uh, when we first got to this country, my parents, that was one of their, uh, the fish that they really like. If you, if you know anything about bacala, it's really a salted cod that, about this long. And it looks like a bat. And it's, that, it's, it's as hard as a bat, too. So you have to let it soak for a long time in order to let it soak, soften up. And then it's a matter of changing the water. And, but it's, it's an acquired taste. We love it. And even, even the, the grandkids really like it. But it's, it's just not... I remember the first time my mom made it, uh, some friends from Chicago came down. And they were from the same hometown in Italy that we were from. And they brought them all these little goodies, you know, it was, it was the bacala, it was, and, uh, it was some, oh, beef tenderloin, it was, oh my gosh, uh, olive oil from Italy, I, my parents thought they'd hit the jackpot. So anyway, um, <clears throat> my mom made it, and I had choir practice that night, and so I went in the, <laughs> into choir, my dad took me, I must have been probably maybe sixth, seventh grade, my dad dropped me off, and I went in there, and we're up in the choir loft and getting ready to sing for midnight mass. And people are going, what is that smell? And everybody started staring at me and I felt very self-conscious. That's not an age where you want to be pointed out. Well, of course there was garlic and there was fish and that was just not uh, an aroma that those people <laughs> were used to at that time. Um, Maybe never. I mean, we were we were in the middle of, of, we were in Iowa, and no Italians around. So my parents, it, it was a little difficult for them, especially finding ingredients. They had hoped our sponsors originally were going to be from um, New York, but after we landed, they switched things on us, and and instead of going to New York, they said, nope, you're going to Iowa. So off to Iowa we went. Well, there, I think there might have been one person who spoke Italian. So it, it was pretty difficult and uh, I, uh, I entered school at five years old in first grade. It, was, it must have been December. The first thing I ever learned was to sing Jingle Bells in English. So that, that was my Jingle Bells in English. Sister Louisa, she was really a sweet, sweet nun. She took me under her wing. So by the time in, I was in first grade, 
I was able to keep up with the kids. I was speaking English like everyone else, and then I became the, the official interpreter for my parents. Okay, this should be starting any time now. You're probably ready to fall asleep or else getting hungry. I wish I could offer you a glass of wine, cup of coffee, tea. You, you never walk into a kitchen, or even my, my mother-in-law, who's passed away, but you never walked in without first saying, do you want something to drink? Do you want something to eat? Do you feel the same way? Is, is it that way in your home? Yeah, you walk in, uh, that's the first thing you're asked. And you never leave hungry either, because by golly, you better say you're, you're gonna eat something because it, it, the food will just keep coming out regardless. Okay, it's gonna start simmering, thank goodness. And I'll put the, the tortellini in and we'll let that simmer for just a bit, then add the spinach and then we're done. And um, serve it with, uh, with a little bit of Parmesan cheese or uh, maybe even sprinkle some tortillas on top. Tortillas taste good with everything. At least I think so, how about you? Could you go for a tortilla right now? Nachos, a dip, boy that sounds good. You shouldn't really cook too much when you're hungry or go to the store. But now I would, you know, we were talking about shopping, but as far as shopping goes, I would rather go to a, like one of those boutique grocery stores and just shop the aisles just to think of all the potential that you can make and all the neat things that you can do with it. Going clothes shopping, oh my gosh, it's like, tell me I'm going to the dentist. I just, I really do not get a big kick out of going to the store shopping. It's just not fun at all. So, in just about a minute, I think, it should be just about ready to go. I'm, I'll go ahead and put in, I think sometimes, now I'm not sure about this since I'm new to the induction. Maybe one of you can advise me. But since this is such a heavy pan, it's, it's, it's safe to put on here. But would one of those that are specifically made for the induction, would that work faster? Would the, would the water come to a boil faster? Because it said, um, it, it's, there it is, it's starting to just simmer. But that's what they said. But for the time being, I'm using this. It's, it's such a good pan anyway. We, I don't think, it doesn't spend very much time in the cabinet. I think we have it out almost every day. Okay, now it's going. Do you have soup on um, uh, Christmas Eve? A lot of people I know will have a, like a lighter meal, but it'll be a soup other, other than if you're Italian and you have the, the Feast of the Seven Fishes. Okay, I'm going to start putting these in gently. I don't want to splash myself. And I don't want to overcook these either. A lot of time when we make pasta, we don't add it to uh, the soup. What we'll do is we'll, even under al dente, we'll go ahead and cook it a little bit uh, in water, in, in salted water, and then we'll go ahead and uh, add it to the, to the soup. Otherwise, um, it absorbs too much, too much liquid, and then it gets very starchy. And we don't like to do that. That's, uh, in fact, that's what we started doing with our uh, Louisiana gumbo. I kind of like the idea. We used to go ahead and put the, the rice in with it and let it cook. Instead, um, I put the, the, Louise, the gumbo in a bowl and then just put a, a scoop of rice on top of it. And it looks a little bit more attractive. I think it looks, uh, it, I, I don't know, I just like it plated better that way. Okay, all right, so a few more minutes. And then we'll add, we'll go ahead and add the spinach. Well, you've been very patient being here with me. I didn't think it would take this long for it to come to a simmer, but it did. But I gabbed, you listened. So I hope you wrote something because I'd sure like to uh, be able to see what you said, but I, I have to squint and I'll have to look later. So anyway, we were talking about traveling. I know a lot of people go to their relative's house during during the during the holidays. We used to, when my parents still lived in Iowa, 
we uh, we tried going one or two Christmases out there. I I believe my daughter Michelle must have been oh just a little itty bitty thing, and then Jason is a, a 13 months younger than she is, and he was just a baby too. So they must have been she must have been two two and whatever, and <clears throat> it started snowing so badly, and uh, it it was really hard coming back home. And when you have two babies and you're in the car for five hours, it's just not pleasant. So we started telling my parents that we would be there for Thanksgiving and Christmas, we'd have to stay at home. And it, it was kind of sad for them. Then they finally moved to be closer to us and that, that made things a lot easier. Okay, these are, oh, this is gonna be so good. Then add, uh, add a little bit of this. So don't forget the tip about the the, the paper towels because I my gosh I, I know I do go through a lot of paper towels but when I when they I use them to absorb um, the like the romaine or this I go ahead and I dry them and I can always use them for wipe up, up spills so they don't they don't get really get wasted. I've never made homemade tortellini. We make um, ravioli, and we like making that. But you know, I was watching someone the other day make homemade uh, tortellini. My gosh, he looked like a little factory the way he was wrapping those things around his fingers and, and just you know filling them and doing it. And I thought, gee, I know there's a lot of really talented uh, Italian uh, bloggers who have done it themselves, but I've I've never really attempted it so. Maybe that'll have to be on the bucket list. I'll have I'll have to give that a try. There's quite a few things I haven't tried making, but I would make more. Um, Mary knows about this. She has she has plenty of people to feed. Um, I would uh, we would probably make more, but the thing is we have to eat it. Or if we're not going to visit our kids, where you know they're they're our guinea pigs. Um, <clears throat> We end up having all this food, and, and we don't waste food, so here we go. So right now, I'm going to go ahead and add the spinach and just let it come to a wilt. Oh, there's, the, there's the paper towel. There we go. So we just posted a very special recipe that we've been kind of saving. Um, our son, Jason, he's the hunter, and he, uh, he gave us a venison tenderloin. And one thing I've always wanted to make, and that again, we just made it, was uh, a Wellington, a beef Wellington. Well, didn't make a beef Wellington. I think my daughter, Michelle, has made a pork tenderloin Wellington. Uh, but it turned out so good. The duck cell has sage in it and then the mushrooms. Oh my heavens. And the recipe was really not that difficult to do. Uh, we, uh, I was amazed how good it tasted. I mean, that the meat is just as tender as it can be. So we're gonna have to try it with the pork sometime. So anyway, this is it. It's done. Um, we, I guess I, I did make it in 30 minutes. I, if Probably if I would have had this on the gas stove, it might have it might have come to a simmer faster. But I hope you give this a try, and uh, I hope you join us next week. And uh, I'll go ahead and post the recipe up above. Uh, give me a little bit of time, and I will give it to you. And as I said, it, it's super easy. Um, I think I said two quarts of, uh, of broth and 10 ounces of tortellini three uh, cloves garlic, chopped onion, oregano, chicken tenders, uh, paste salsa, and the Del Monte, uh, oh, I shouldn't have said the brand, should I? Well, that's the one we used. It, it had the green, the green peppers in it, the green chilies, chilies. Okay, so anyway, I hope uh, you have a good week, a good weekend. I hope it's not snowing where you're at. And uh, I hope to see you next week. Ciao, arrivederci, alla prossima.